Edible mushrooms are a great addition to any subsistence garden. Mushrooms like shiitake or lion's mane are really more like a perennial crop, like a fruit tree, than they are an annual, like a potato. Once you inoculate your logs, you can kind of just sit back and let them produce and harvest them. It does take a little bit of time for them to get going, but once they do, you'll have a log that can produce mushrooms for anywhere from four to six, even 10 years, uh, depending on the size of the log. Shiitake and lion's mane mushrooms are a critical part of our diet when we're living off the land. Mushrooms contain vitamin D, which is essential to a healthy diet, especially in the winter. Many store-bought foods like milk, cheese, and bread are fortified with vitamin D, so we tend to take it for granted. But low vitamin D levels can lead to a weakened immune system, muscle pain, depression, and in extreme cases, bone-related issues like rickets. Our winter diet includes fish and organ meat from venison, which are both rich sources of vitamin D, but if you are planning to live off the land and avoid eating any animal products, mushrooms are essential, and I would even consider taking a vitamin D supplement in the winter as well. At its most basic, you need two things to grow mushrooms at home. You need mycelium for the type of mushroom you're trying to grow, and you need a medium to grow it on. And you can buy this uh, mycelium or spawn in a number of different ways online. Mycelium is commonly sold either as sawdust spawn or plug spawn, which are used to introduce the mycelium to your growing medium. Some mushrooms have very aggressive mycelium, and as we will cover in the oyster mushroom module, can pretty much grow on any medium. Shiitake and lion's mane, however, prefer to grow on hardwood logs. We're lucky to live in a city with a large number of mature oak and maple trees around town, which are regularly pruned to protect the power lines. In the winter and early spring, we keep a close eye on the arborist trucks and snag any fresh cut hardwood logs we can get our hands on. The reason we want only the fresh cut logs is because as soon as a log is cut, the tree's immune system begins to fail, which will allow other wild fungi to inoculate it. These can sometimes outcompete the shiitake and lion's mane, so it's best to use logs within a month of them being cut. The best trees for shiitake are oak, sugar maple, sweet gum, and hornbeam, while the best trees for lion's mane are beech, mulberry, and sugar maple. Other hardwood trees will work for each of them, but if you can get your hands on one of those species, that's ideal. Avoid pine trees or any evergreen trees as they are filled with antifungal compounds that prevent shiitake and lion's mane from growing. Once you have your logs ready to go, you can either use a drill or angle grinder to cut holes in the logs every four to six inches. For new mushroom growers, I recommend starting with plug spawn because all you need to insert that into the log is a handheld drill and a hammer. If you're using sawdust spawn, you will need a plunger that can press the spawn into the holes. After all of the holes are filled with dowel or sawdust spawn, it is best to seal them with beeswax to prevent them from drying out and keep insects from eating the young mycelium. Another entirely different style of inoculating logs is called the totem method. In this case, you need a chainsaw to cut the logs into sections about four to six inches tall. Then you simply pile sawdust spawn onto the top of each section, stack the next section, pile spawn on that, and so on, like a big layer cake. We have had success doing this for both lion's mane and shiitake logs. After inoculating the logs, you'll need to wait at least six months before expecting to see any mushrooms from your shiitakes and up to a year and a half before seeing any lion's mane. This seems like a long time to wait, but when we think of it in terms of a perennial plant, you wouldn't expect to harvest a peach the week after you plant a peach tree either. Like a perennial plant, your mushroom logs will produce for years to come as long as they're kept in a moist section of your garden and not allowed to dry out completely. We keep our mushroom logs under this dense willow canopy in the side of our garden. It stays very moist back here and we hardly ever water them. It's also the area that our rain garden directs runoff water to. After six to eight months, depending on the variety and the time of year you inoculated them, you can begin to force your shiitakes into fruiting. Forcing your shiitakes is as simple as rapidly lowering their temperature, so they think a cold spell has come through, which shocks them into fruiting. The most common way to do this is to dunk them in a tank of cool water for about 24 hours. After a couple days, you should see tiny mushrooms pinning on the logs, and within a week, you'll be harvesting mushrooms. You can do this about once a month to induce fruiting, but make sure to give the logs time in between to recuperate. Shiitake and lion's mane mushrooms are generally very pest free. The caveat here is that they are often covered in little insects that use them for shelter, but you can simply brush them off most of the time and the mushrooms will be in perfect condition. However, there are two critters that can cause some damage and those are snails and slugs. 
Because of their slow nature and the ephemeral fruiting of mushrooms, they tend to only catch on to the fruiting of the mushrooms if they're left on the log for a little while too long, or if you are lucky enough to have such a boon of mushrooms that the fruiting is lasting for a couple weeks. If you're having a problem with them, the best way to deal with snails and slugs is to wait until a couple hours after dark, throw on a headlamp, fill up a cup of salty water, and go on a slug hunt. I've been referring to lion's mane mushroom throughout because that's what is most commonly recognized, but we actually grow a couple of different species of the heresium fungus in our garden. One of these is Heresium arenaceus, which is the lion's mane mushroom, and another is Heresium americanum, which is also called comb tooth mushroom. Both of these have been cultivated, you know, relatively recently and are still kind of a wild mushroom, so you can't really select specific varieties like you can with shiitakes. You just kind of get what you get. Shiitake, on the other hand, have been cultivated for quite a while, and you can get all kinds of different varieties and strains depending on who you buy your spawn from. The three things you really want to keep in mind, though, are warm weather, cold weather, or a wide range for your strain of shiitake. And those names are pretty much like they sound, and they just relate to when that particular mushroom typically fruits throughout the year. As the names indicate, the cold weather strains fruit in the winter, the warm weather strains typically fruit in the early summer and early fall, and the wide range can fruit throughout the year. It is important to note that wide range are the most susceptible to forcing, so we tend to grow a lot of them, which gives us some control over when they produce mushrooms. It's very exciting when your shiitake logs first start fruiting, and once they go, they go really fast. So they can go from a little button like this to a full-size shiitake in a matter of days. So it's very important to keep an eye on them so they don't get too big or something starts to eat them. The main thing you want to watch out for is you should harvest them before they go from being kind of cupped under like this to being cupped out like this, because that means they're going to be releasing their spores, they're kind of done, and their texture will start to deteriorate. If you plan to eat your mushrooms right away, you can typically just brush off any dirt or bugs and then just chop them up and cook them. These ones we got just at the right time. There's hardly any bugs. They really don't need to be washed. And I typically avoid washing them unless it's absolutely necessary because mushrooms really soak up water like a sponge and they can get waterlogged and then that can be really hard to cook out. Um, obviously you can do it if absolutely necessary, but usually a brushing is just fine. If you have a surplus of mushrooms and want to store some for use throughout the winter, you can dehydrate them and store them in airtight jars. Then, when you're ready to use them, you simply rehydrate them by pouring over some hot water and they're ready to use just like fresh mushrooms. Save the water that you rehydrate them with because it makes a great mushroom broth. Regardless of how you're going to use your mushrooms though, you should sit them in the sun for a few hours before eating them because just like us, they synthesize vitamin D when exposed to sunlight and as little as a few minutes of exposure actually increases their vitamin D content significantly. Shiitake are such a versatile ingredient. They lend that great savory, earthy flavor to anything that they're in. And when we're feeling tired of venison or other game meat, they provide a really nice meaty texture. Today, we're going to make one of our favorite preparations and honor shiitake's Asian roots by making ramen. For this recipe, you can use either fresh or dried shiitake. We usually have our stored dried just because that's such a nice way to store them. Um, but if you use them dried, you're going to want to rehydrate them. So we just take them out, it smells amazing, and put them in a heat safe container like this. So it's probably good enough. And then we'll just cover with warm water and let that sit for at least 15 minutes. Now, the most important part of ramen is your broth, and we're gonna get that going by deeply caramelizing an onion, and then we're gonna add some stock. We usually use venison stock, which would be very similar to beef stock, but you can use veggie broth or even water, although the depth of flavor won't be quite as nice. Today, we're actually gonna use the broth that formed when we rehydrated the mushrooms, which will add another nice shiitake layer of flavor, and we'll also put in some seaweed. 
kombu, which is a sea kelp, is the traditional flavoring, but we have some that we collected when we were at the beach, so we're just gonna put that in and see how it works. Miso or soy sauce is another great addition to your broth. Just be careful and only do a little bit at the start because your broth will cook down and you don't want it to get too salty. You can always add a little more at the end. We happen to have some miso that we made a couple years back, so I'm gonna use that. Now we'll let this broth just simmer for about 30 minutes, and in the meantime, we can turn our attention to the toppings. One of the great things about ramen is you can put all kinds of odds and ends in it. So the little wedge of cabbage at the back of your fridge or the radish that's left over from making a salad, all of those can go on top of your ramen and be delicious. But we usually use some type of green like bok choy, some type of root like radish or carrot, and then always a couple of soft boiled eggs that will melt all over the ramen at the end and make it creamy and delicious. For the eggs, I'm just gonna bring a small pot of water to a boil, then add the eggs in and let them simmer for about four to five minutes. I don't wanna go any longer because I want the yolks to still be nice and runny. Now we're going to slice up some of these shiitakes to saute for that perfect crispy, chewy bite on top of our ramen. I'm just getting a skillet going here on pretty high heat, and I'm gonna add some oil and get it to almost smoking, and then add in these slices. Now that the oil is nice and hot, we'll add our shiitakes in. You wanna give them a little room in the pan so they don't just steam, but have uh, the space to really caramelize on the edges. While the shiitakes are going, I'm just gonna chop up the rest of my ingredients that I'll put kind of right in at the end. Our shiitakes have this beautiful golden brown color on the outside and our eggs are finished boiling. So I'm gonna take them out and just run them under some cool water until we can touch them and then peel the shells off. Now that everything has almost come together, we're going to go ahead and cook our ramen noodles. When we're living off the land, we don't use these, but they are delicious, so I'm gonna use them today. Uh, we just do them right in the broth. All right, we're in the home stretch here. Gonna sip my broth and see if it needs any more seasoning. Oh, really good. So, now we'll just go ahead and put some of these noodles in a bowl, then arrange our toppings as artfully or inartfully as you desire, and then hit it with some broth. I really hope you invest some time in growing shiitakes in your garden. They are incredibly rewarding and delicious.